When I think about season 12 of Doctor Who, I can't help but think about how little trust I have in the series since Chris Chibnall took over. Whether it be his ambitious, but not really that ambitious, season 11, with no returning monsters, but horribly handled political stories which were more lectures than informative, or this season itself, which didn't know how to properly set up its mystery, and instead kept, kept you interested by going, ooh, look at the keys, over and over again. I never know how to feel, but I do know I'm never wowed by the show anymore. Uh, make no mistake, I still intend to watch the show, if for no other reason than to have content, and just to really say I gave this run the full try, but I also still like Doctor Who. Nothing here has really upset me enough where I have to just turn away from it. Even The Timeless Child has not totally upset me. It Upset is just not the right word. But to say that this season was horrible would be the same in my opinion as saying it was the best the show's ever been in years. I found it harder to remember these episodes because they're not really as memorable so much as I remember big things about them. Again, the keys. I don't remember interesting little moments with the characters or the world that make me feel like there's any real growth happening. It feels like all that matters is the destination over the journey itself. What I mean is, this season, have any of the companions really felt like they've changed this season or even the last? Sure, we got a real cons we got a real cementing of Ryan and Graham's relationship in season 11, and this season we got just a hint of Yaz as a character in one episode, but that is pretty much it. Graham is worried about his cancer coming back. We found out that Yaz is a cop and Ryan has a friend who is depressed, but that's all really it, and that was all in one episode. The show wants you to like these characters, but it keeps selling you the idea of them. As I've said before, a lot wouldn't be helped if they didn't keep using all three companions in every episode. Two seasons in, and I still don't find them compelling, whereas even companions I wasn't fond of in New Who, I at least understood them by their first season. Hell, at this point, we're at Danny Pink levels of dull here for characters, and Danny at least had the excuse of not only not being in multiple episodes, but not even really being in the TARDIS. Or even aware of the Doctor for the most part. In terms of the Doctor and the big mystery about her life, I just can't bring myself to do anything more than think about how bad it is for the show. The Doctor is no longer this outcast member of this elitist society. The character is now at the forefront of her species, whose importance predates even Omega and Rassilon. And the whole time this story happens, she is totally impotent as a character. I'm not even talking about just the moment when the Master is telling her the story of Tateun. I mean, from the moment this happened... I must, child. What did you just say? She doesn't know. What are you talking about? Her letting not Sir Barris and Selby destroy Gallery for her, she just... She just feels so passive and has no real role in the story. She knows the master destroyed Gallifrey by the first story of this season, and it is tied to the mysterious tile of this child, which she undoubtedly remembers hearing about from the Ghost Monument, and she does nothing with that information. No investigating, no attempts to find the master, nothing can tell Fugitive of the Jadoon, where we meet an incarnation of the Doctor that she does remember, and this incarnation doesn't remember being her. The story and the mystery happened to her, and she does nothing to further the story herself. A lot of this story would be helped by us just seeing that she does go to Gallifrey to find survivors or to figure out about this timeless child. That if we just saw on screen in the TARDIS the words timeless child flashing to imply that she's scanning all of time and space for any hint of it. Imagine if that's what led her to the Villa Diodati and what had her give the Siberium to the lone Cyberman. Even the story of Brendan doesn't do anything for the Doctor. It's a story told to us, the audience, but not a story told to the Doctor. Or even a story she's experienced like in a flash. Like, the, as if the closer she's getting to this, she's getting more memories about it. Being the child of the child doesn't really do anything other than make canon more confusing, and in a lot of ways takes away from the character, like I said before. It would be like if it turned out Batman actually has metahuman powers that, that explain his intelligence and his physical prowess. The character isn't the same after that reveal. Then she snaps out of it when Dr. Ruth shows up and decides the only way to save the universe is to destroy Gallifrey, but she ultimately can't do it, which is weird because there's no reason she shouldn't do it. It's totally different from the War Doc, who was willing to destroy Gallifrey with living people on it. 
and is not similar to the Ninth Doctor in Parting of the Ways, the Tenth Doctor in the Other Time, or Eleven in Cold War, but the episode seems to think it is, and that the Doctor is alright with someone else making the hard choice for her. And that isn't even similar to other stories where this has happened, like, say, The Audio Enemy of the Daleks or Project Lazarus. It is in a lot of ways more betrayal of this scene here. Never cruel or cowardly. Never give up. Never give in. And it can only really work if we see the Doctor sort of berating herself for it. As if the fact that she lets someone else do this when she should have been the one to do it. But going by how this episode, how the time of the children ended, that didn't happen. Let's let's talk about the Lone Cyberman for a bit. Design-wise, build-up and first appearance, he's something I've always wanted for the Cyberman. And I always felt they needed like a Davros. Like, like the person who said, like, yeah, Cyberman, this is my idea. This is the future. This is for the best. Or even the Cyber Planner, I, aka Mr. Clever from Nightmare and Silver, he's menacing, he believes conversion is necessary, and even sees himself as impure but continues for the mission's sake. Then Time of Children happens and he's just a joke. The Master is pointing out how stupid his plan is to remove organic parts of him because then he'd just be a robot, and then, he, then he's just removed from the story with the stupid death particle pretty much being a MacGuffin for the better part of the story. The lone Cyberman and the whole war with the Cybermen. It's just a means to get the Doctor to the portal, which leads to Gallifrey for the Master to tell the story. It's all just this weird, disjointed, and really mess of a season that no one deserves to watch or even act in, honestly. This season, in my opinion, was not fair to anyone that actually made, to the people that made the season, to, to the directors, to the actors. It wasn't fair to them, because these episodes have all looked great, Every actor was doing their absolute best to make this work, but overall they're in a product that just feels so lackluster and lifeless. Chips has revealed this season hasn't killed Doctor Who regardless of what the fan response is, nor has it saved Doctor Who or given the best of anything. I think, though, he's done some damage, and I feel I feel to the more concrete canon of the story, he's that's where most of the damage is. There's a reason people like that the Cartmel Master Plan ultimately was just more of an obscure possibility than an actual fact. I'm willing to bet either next season or even in the holiday special we will see Dr. Ruth and maybe other doctors. I think that will happen and we'll see that can really only be played once because nothing comes from it really or what I do expect to happen and you'll have heard it here first that it will either be that this was a trick by the master which really doesn't hurt but it's also going to feel like he just sort of backed out. That Chip sort of backed out on the idea when he saw the negative fan response to it. In a lot of ways, that's just as bad because it means Chibs, not knowing how to tell a story, decided to just tease the audience who will more than likely be another unsatisfactory story. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my opinion on this season of Doctor Who. Were there good episodes? Well, Villa Diodati, Can You Hear Me, I felt were really great episodes. Elements of Praxis were good. Um, Nikola Tesla's Nightmare of Terror, whatever it was called, I felt was a missed opportunity. It should have been a pure historical. If you really want to tell a really progressive story, Chibs, tell a pure historical. You should really just do that. You can do a lot more work with an actual pure historical. So anyway, we're going to bring this video to a close here. If you're new to the Bucket Think Tank, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out some other videos, and I'll catch you all later. This is the Bucket Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.